Hey everybody, it's Paul again with Epic TCG, and we are back to talk about the rares, the box toppers that are rare, and the uncommon box toppers, the two of them, that are found in Ultimate Masters, Magic the Gathering. So uh, this video, instead of going from most valuable to least valuable, we are going to go from least to most, and I just realized I've got this stack of cards right here, like way out of order. How did I manage to do that? All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll figure that out as we go. We're going to start off here with um, with kind of the bottom of the barrel. Um, I have how many do I have? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen cards are right here that are less than two dollars each. Um, a lot of these are less than a dollar each. This, my friends, is what sadness feels like in cardboard sleeve, sleeve protected form. Um, when you open up a booster pack, it's gonna run you, you know, a good $11 at the least, maybe upwards of $15, just depending on where you're buying them at, and you pull yourself a Lava Claw Reaches. That just stinks. Um, you know, these are these are rares that are, you know, just right now have just been absolutely crushed. Now, uh, I'm just gonna spend a quick second talking about the land cycle here. Uh, they're all in the rare category. They're the man lands from World Wake. I actually like all of them except for Lava Claw Reaches. Um, you know, I just don't feel like it becomes a very good creature. Uh, these enter the battlefield tapped. They provide two types of mana, so they are they are not bad in that sense. Um, I like the fact that they can become become a creature with some kind of ability. Um, I like Stirring Wildwoods creature. I love uh, Celestial Colonnades creature. Um, Creeping Tar Pit is fine. Uh, Raging Ravine is fine. Lava Claw just stinks. So, um, yeah, these are like under, you know, well under a dollar. I think the Lava Club reaches like 20 or 30 cents. I mean, it's just, just silly. Um, I think that I think that everything except for Lava Claw reaches is going to go up. I, I, could, I mean, Lava Claw is going to go up, but just what it goes up to, is it's not going to be much. It's not going to be anything to talk about. All of these cards, honestly, I, I don't think are going to go up really crazy. And the reason why a lot of these are just so low in price right now, um, like Golgari Tra Cave Trolls like, sitting at a buck, Sublime Archangels like $1.25. Um, I don't think any of these are going to go up really high, but I think the reason why they're all so low right now is because Nourishing Shoal, Disrupting Shoal, the reason why they're all so low right now is because so many of the other cards are being chased after and so many people are spending money on unopened product that it is really just, you know, kind of sucking the value out of these particular cards. Um, one quick note about these cards. In my opinion, some of these, not all of these, but some of these, if you can include them into a trade, like uh, like let's say you're trying to trade for some stuff and, you know, all things being equal, you know, everything's pretty much equal. If you can get the other party to throw in like one or two of these rares that are just kind of bulk right now, um, and just sit on them for a while, I think that that's a great strategy. I think a card like Seize the Day could easily go from, it's like 35 cents now or 50 cents now. This could easily be $2 down the line. You know, we're talking about a profit of $1.50 that is not gonna make or break anybody. Um, you know, it's certainly not gonna pay the rent, but this is something that over time could grow into something pretty good for your trade binder. It's a great little microfinance way to kind of grow your collection and be able to trade up into better and better things. Uh, Revel Art, out of, out of this group of cards, if I had to pick ones that I would target, Dig Through Time is probably the number one. Here's why. Um, number one, this is a card that in Commander is actually pretty good. The casting cost is huge, but the effective casting cost, like actually how much you pay to cast this, is tr usually gonna be a lot less. Usually you're gonna be paying like two blue plus a colorless, two blue plus two, to look at the top seven cards of your library and put two of them in your hand and the rest of them on the bottom. That's a pretty big effect for the effect of mana. Of course, you're utilizing the delve cost at that. Commander is also a format where you can cast big spells. You've got time to do that. The inventory of this card is going down. Um, it's sitting at like under $2 right now, I think like $1.40 or something. Um, but the inventory of this card online is disappearing. All these other ones, there's like lots and lots of. Um, so this is the number one card out of these that I would be targeting. Sublime Archangel, I think it's another good one. This one's sitting at about $1.25. Golgari Grave Troll, Grave Troll, about a dollar. Um, Revel Arc at under 50 cents. Both of the Shoals, maybe. 
And then I am always a sucker for these kind of man lands. Stirring Wildwood would definitely have a huge benefit over Lava Claw to me. This card is the lowest value card in the set at the rare category. It's 15 cents. There are commons that cost four times as much as this card. How crazy is that? Now, this is interesting because this basically is Bazaar of Baghdad of Arabian Nights fame in a creature form. Now, there's a whole lot of problems that come with this being a creature, um, but there are a few benefits too. And I feel like down the line, this could be a decent card. I just don't know how in the world it's ever gonna get there. Um, this, maybe one day, if it grows up to be really big and strong and eats all its vegetables, might be a dollar or two. Um, this card's never, I just don't I just don't think this is gonna be anything. Although it is a merfolk, and there's a lot of merfolk stuff in the new allegiances. Uh, what is it, Return to Return to Ravnica Allegiances? Is that right? Alliances? I don't know. Um, there is a merfolk synergy there, so hey, maybe this might become something. Sovereigns used to be a very expensive card and is not anymore. Tassigar, we're gonna get to you in just a minute. So, uh, so anyway, so that's like, this is like the bulk stuff right here, and I spent way too much time talking about really cheap cards, but I think that that's something you kinda need to know about. Here's my box toppers. This is really what feels bad right here, buying a box of Ultimate Masters and getting that as your box topper. I thought I felt bad when I got him. But that's like really bad. Um, this is the least expensive box topper there is. It's just under twenty dollars. I don't think I don't think that it's going to go down any further than that. Just because I think people are going to keep them as more like a showpiece for their collection. Um, people will keep these that are trying to put together a set of the box toppers. Um, I don't think people are going to get them to play with. But twenty dollars, I think, is the absolute lowest it's going to be. That's just my opinion on this. This card actually can see play. Um, this box topper is kind of funny. It goes for about thirty-five dollars. Not very much inventory of them out there. The regular version of this card—I do don't know if I had it in here or not in my pile. The regular version of this card is only thirty-five cents. So it's a hundred times multiple for this for the box topper versus the regular. We were talking about multiples, and we'll talk about it more with box toppers in just a few minutes. All right, Eternal Witness. Got the box topper. This actually got two. It's one of the two uncommon box toppers that were available. Kitchen Finks being the other one. This is a $70 box topper right now. The regular version of this card is sitting about $250, 3 bucks. It is going up in inventory, starting to disappear of this. This box topper is absolutely phenomenal looking. With the amount of play that Eternal Witness gets, and specifically the amount of play in Commander, I see this box topper potentially being a $100 box topper. Um, I have really revised my opinion of it, um, you know, kind of as I've, as I've been doing this. People are willing to pay a significantly higher premium than I thought they would be for these special edition kind of foil cards. Even though this card is just an uncommon and functionally no different from any of the other ones, this artwork and this format is really awesome looking. You're getting a reflection of like my studio light there. Hey, everybody. So, um, so that's my opinion of that. If you know, if you have the if you have the the ability to trade for this now, um, I don't recommend maybe buying it, but but trading for it now if you can definitely. I do think that this will increase in value. I don't see this going down from where it's at. I feel like there's just too much support for it as a playable card, and I think that that is vitally important, which is the huge difference between this and this. So. Um, I mean, even if we're just comparing, you know, apples to apples, two rare cards, both box hoppers, both undesirable rares overall. This has some play value. This has almost none. This is almost twice the value of this, even though they're both feel bad budget box toppers. So just my uh, my two cents or nickel or, you know, dollars worth of opinion on those. All right, getting into it here. So I thought I had these in like least to most expensive order, but apparently I messed some things up. Let me just uh, take a quick peek through here and see if I can get these back where I where I thought they were. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna have to do it this way. Let's flip these over. You already saw it was on top. So again, we are only talking about rares in this. So uh, visions from visions of beyond and thespian stage. Both of these are sitting at right about two dollars right now. Just so you know, I'm using TCG player pricing on or about January fourth, um, and I am rounding. Uh, I typically tend to round up by a couple cents just to keep it, you know, even dollars. Um, makes it a whole lot easier. Visions of Beyond. Um, this is a card, 
actually both of these are cards that don't have very much inventory compared to the other rares that are available from this set. So I think that that's important when you are thinking about buying these cards. Um, these are both about $2. I see these both being about $4 rares. Um, and I see that happening sooner rather than later. Uh, Visions of Beyond, interesting card, costs one blue, uh, draw a card. If a graveyard has 20 or more cards in it, draw three cards instead. This is a card that I think is a lot, looks a lot better than it actually is. Um, basically, you're looking at an ancestral recall with a condition, a big condition. To get 20 cards in a graveyard, not exiled from play, not anything else, in a graveyard, after you take into account what's on the field of play as well as what's in a person's hand, that player has gone through a little more than half their deck, probably. Um, to get 20 cards in a graveyard is pretty impressive, in my opinion. But this is a card that has some definite value to it. At the very least, it cycles, because you can draw a card with it. Um, so I like this card. I think $4 is a solid price for it. And I, like I said, I think sooner rather than later. Thespian Stage, another card that's 2 bucks right now. Uh, this has gone up from $1.50 recently, um, up to about $2. This is going to be a $4 card, maybe even more. Um, one of my favorite cards from the set can copy a land. So kind of a neat ability. Pattern of Rebirth. Um, this one is also sitting at about $2. Um, you know, cool looking card, uh, neat artwork, doesn't do a whole lot for your financial bottom line. I think this is gonna go to $4 as well. Like th this is like my now $2 is gonna go to $4 kind of thing. Um, Speaking of which, we'll just include Woodfall Primus in there. This is a card that is $250. Uh, it's the only one that has not an even dollar amount. Uh, $250, I think it goes to five. Um, just because I think that this is a card that's going to see play in Commander or does see play in Commander. Um, so I think that that's kind of that's kind of like where your low, low dollar rares are right there. If you can get Thespians stage included in trades um, to kind of to kind of even things out or kind of push you over the edge, that's a great pickup. I think Visions of Beyond is another one to keep an eye on. Um, Pattern of Rebirth, kind of cool if you're a green player. Woodfall Primus, always fun to have those big creatures. All right, Gamble. Gamble is a card that has really come down in value. Uh, sitting at about $3 right now. This one I see going to about eight. Um, search your library for a card, put that card into your hand, discard a card at random. Um, I think in red for a single red, that is a that's a pretty darn good ability. The um, the randomness factor of it is what scares a lot of people away. But I think that this is a good ability. I think it's costed very very well. I say eight dollars for that. Um, when I'm giving you these prices, I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to start seeing rares going up in price probably about March. Um, on a side note, boxed product of this has really gone up in price this week. Uh, we're sitting at the lowest price you can get for a sealed box with box toppers on TCG Player is $340. That's before sales tax, folks. Um, on eBay, you're looking at like $350, $360. So it, it's about the same price, uh, you know, just depending on where you buy it from. So the rares are holding steady. The, uh, the mythics are beginning to go up in price. Um, as sealed product is going up, but the rares seem to be kind of holding steady. And but I think that that's gonna. I think honestly that's really gonna last until about March, and then we're gonna see some real movement at the upside on a lot of these rares. All right, Raging Ravine. Um, this one is a three dollar card right now. Uh, it does have a box topper. It's our lowest value one of these that has a box topper. Uh, the box topper sitting at forty right now. I don't see a lot of movement in the box topper to be honest with you. Um, I do see this card going from about three to about eight. Um, that's kind of that's kind of my prediction for that. I think that this land does have a decent kind of creature attached to it, has an interesting ability, and in longer games, I could see that being a uh, you know a benefit. Flagstones of Trocair, four dollar card. So we're, we're gradually getting our way up the dollar scale here. Four dollars for Flagstones. Um, this is a card that is going to allow you to cycle, thin out your deck a little bit um, as it goes in and out of your graveyard. You could certainly do different things to get this in and out of your graveyard. Uh, Crucible of Worlds kind of springs to mind. I see this as being a, a card in Commander. Any kind of Commander that plays white could use this, and um, I think it would really, really allow them to kind of thin that deck out, get get those lands out of there so they're not wasting a draw phase on a basic land. So um, this is now $4. I see this going to 10 all right, Eldrazi Conscription. This is another card that has come down in value just a lot. And I think with a lot of these cards, I don't remember if I said it at the beginning of the video, the reason why I just think a lot of them are so cheap, again, is because once we get into the bigger cards here, 
I just don't think that there's a lot of money in the economy, in the magic economy right now for some of these smaller dollar cards. It's kind of pushing like the mid range up, but it's depressing this lower tier from people who are trying to sell cards to get back money that they paid for boxes or so they can buy new stuff. Um, this is another $4 card. Um, I think this one's going to go to $10. There is a low inventory of this card right now. Bridge from below. Uh, this is a card that there's actually significantly high inventory. So this is sitting at $4, has come down in value tremendously. I think that unless, unless a deck comes out with this, you know, that's utilizing this particular card, um, I just think that this is going to hang around the $4 mark. Long term, I think $6 is, is probably a real price. That may be the, that may be the best we can hope for because there's a tremendous amount of inventory in this card right now. Containment Priest. This one actually surprises me. Uh, $4 right now. Uh, this is, again, another prediction of about $6. This was originally in a Commander deck. So this is our first reprint of this deck, of this card. First time it's available in foil. Um, there's just a lot of inventory of it, and people are not snapping this up the way that, that they thought it would. Um, it was very expensive when it was only in Commander. Uh, now, just not so much. I think $6 is about where this one's going to settle in at. Unless, un unless we find some stuff that just really needs to be hosed with it, I think $6 is where it's going to be. Vexing Devil. Uh, one red mana for a 4-3 creature. Now, it does does give players an option to take four points of damage, and they can kind of have them go to the graveyard instead. Um, this one is at $4 also. I think this one's going to go to 7 If people can figure out a way to use this, they're, honestly, this could be a $20 card. Um, in, in, in a very aggressive red deck, I could, I could certainly see that being just kind of being one like I'm almost like a lightning bolt like here I want to play a double oh you know you don't want me to play that okay fine <laughs> take four damage um it's just not there yet I, I feel like there has to be like some other card for this to be like a really big thing um so seven dollars in in the short term but this is one in my opinion just kind of keep an eye on all right ruined halo this one has fallen in price a lot this was one of those that there just wasn't a lot of copies available so the price gradually went up over time um and it's now way way back down so this is another one a tremendous amount of inventory four dollars is where it's at honestly i would not spend cash on this um if you want one of these just trade for it uh shouldn't be hard to come up with four dollars worth of trade material i think this is going to go down a little bit more in price um and i think four dollars is probably about where this is going to settle all right daybreak coronet uh this one there is a low inventory of. Um, this is one that I definitely see going to $8. Um, I think that this is just going to be one of those things that is in white aggressive decks. Um, you know, it, $8, I, I, I think, I think is where this, this one ends up. Fauna Shaman. All right. We are, is this our, yep, our, this is our first $5 card right here. Uh, this is another one that there's very, very low inventory of compared with the other rares from this set. Uh, sitting at $5 right now, I think this one goes to 10. Maelstrom Pulse, good removal spell right here. Um, played in several different formats. Uh, sitting at $5 right now, the box topper version of it is at 35. I think the regular version of this goes to about 10. And I don't think that the box topper moves a whole lot. I think maybe 40 bucks is where the box topper goes. Um, honestly, this artwork, I don't see a whole lot of difference in the box topper between the foil version and the box topper. So I think, I think from 35 to 40 is where the box topper ends up. And for the regular, I think it's going to double in price. All right, next. Let's see, we have to do this. We have to do like the old flipperoo thing. So where were we at? That was Maelstrom Pulse. Now we've got Creeping Tar Pit and I have the box topper that, yay! At least I thought so. Uh, Creeping Tar Pit is another one that is at $5. I think it's gonna go to 10. Uh, the, the box topper version is at 37. This is another one I think goes to about 40 and just kind of hangs out there. I don't see a whole lot of demand for the box hopper version um, other than people trying to do sets, trying to, you know, or really like this card for some reason. Um, you know, these, these are just kind of my, my opinions on things. Take them for what they're worth. All right, that was a creeping carpet. Now we get to a really cool board clear. All is dust. 
This one is sitting at $6 right now. Uh, this card actually, I think, has a tremendous amount of room to grow. I think this is go, could go to $12 to $15. Uh, commanders love their board clears. Um, this is played in several different formats. So I think that this is a card that has a lot of room to grow. If you can get this in on maybe some bigger trades, uh, definitely a card, in my opinion, to target. All right, Glen Alondra Arch Mage. This one has a low inventory also. I'm going to kind of call attention to that because I think it's important. Uh, this one's sitting at $7 right now. This is another one I think could go to $15. Um, we're going to start seeing some wider spreads here. So yeah, I think that uh, I think I think that this ability to have a creature on the field and you know that could be a blocker if you need, and then you could sacrifice it to counter a spell um, in a pinch. I think that that's a big deal. I think that this one could be a fifteen dollar card. All right, Intumba. Anything that ends with a B is going to be B. Intum has a low inventory also. This one is sitting at $8, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Search your library for a card, put that card in your graveyard, then shuffle your library for one black. Does not appeal to me a whole lot, but I know that there are deck strategies that revolve around it. Um, I think I think about $14 is about where this card's going to end up. Um, I feel like this is one that's got some price memory, and there are some deck strategies that are going to revolve around. This is going to be a good cheap way to do it at instant speed. Um, people are going to need those, as evidenced by the lower inventory. Um, when I talk about low inventory online, I think the reason for that is, a, is several. I think that people, as they're opening the packs, they're putting the cards in their deck instead of selling them to stores. That means stores do not have them for sale. All right, Fulminator Mage. This is actually one of my favorite cards in the set. Um, I like cards that destroy lands. <laughs> Don't know why that is. You can call me an evil person, uh, whatever. Um, this one is sitting at $8. This has fallen a lot in price. Uh, when I started opening the boxes up, these were about 12 bucks. Uh, this happens to be a foil version. I'm, I'm showing you foils when I got them. Um, this one's sitting at $8. Uh, the box topper version is 45 Now, I think the box topper does not have a whole lot of room to go. I think 50 bucks is where the box topper ends up settling down. Um, but I do think that the regular version of this card could go to 20 bucks. Um, I just think that there's a lot of lands out there that do a lot of crazy things. And, you know, honestly, people just don't want to... Put up with that. So this is another one of those things in a deck for three mana, you know, a combination of red and black and colorless. You get a 2-2 creature. He can, you know, sit there and hurt your opponent a little bit or maybe just be a little chump blocker. And on his way out, he can take out a land that is bothering you. So I think that is pretty cool. All right. Gaddock Teague. Oops. Sorry, guys. Um, Gaddock Teague. Another $8 card right now. This one has fallen a lot, but he does see play in several different decks. Um, he His box topper is at 39 Now, I think his box topper has room to grow. I think he could go to 50 maybe even $60. Uh, the box topper is cool. The artwork is cool on this one. I think that as a regular card, I think he can go from 8 to 15 So we're talking about almost double value here with a lot of these. And it's just much more exciting when you're talking about like 8 to 15 as opposed to like 2 to 4. All right, Reanimate is our next card. I have the regular version, and then there's the box topper version there. We were lucky enough to get that. All right, Reanimate is another low inventory card. Uh, $11 for the regular version, and what are we looking at? Reanimate, 66 for the box topper version. Um, I think the box topper is going to be an $80 card. Uh, that's about where things started at. It kind of settled down a little bit. Um, it's now down to about 66. I think it's going to go back up to 80, 85. The artwork on it is really cool looking. Reminds me of Mysterio from Spider-Man. Spider-Man, that is going to be the villain in the new Spider-Man movie, apparently. Um, $11 for the regular version. I think that goes from 11 to 20. I think $20 is where that settles in at. And... 80 for the box top, or 80 to 85. Again, just one black. These are, these cheap black spells are pretty crazy. Okay. Gorio's Vengeance. Uh, this is something, there's an incredible amount of inventory of these online. For whatever reason, these are just all over the place online. I don't know if, I don't know if they're just not selling. I don't know if people are trading them into stores in like record numbers. I, I, I don't, I can't really explain why there's so much inventory of this card, but this card just seems to have a ton of inventory. Um, the price on this one is $11, uh, $41 for the box topper. I actually think the box topper goes down in price. 
I think it goes down to 40 and I think it settles there and I think that's just going to kind of be the end of it. I think the regular card is going to go up to 15 and honestly I think that's just going to be where this one sits at. This is a card from Kamigawa. Not a lot of inventory was out there until Ultimate Masters and now we've just got a ton of inventory and it doesn't seem like the market is absorbing that particular card right now. Okay. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, another low inventory card. Now this one I can see being played in a lot of different formats, especially Commander. Uh, this one does have a box topper, which is at $85 right now. The regular version is at 12. I see the regular version going to 25. And I think the box topper could go to a whopping 135. So I think there's a lot of room to grow in this particular box topper. Uh, I like the artwork on this one. Um, I think this is definitely a card to watch. Pick this up if you're if you need it. Next one is Phyrexian Tower. Okay, this one is $12. Uh, there's no box topper for this. Maybe there is, but I just didn't write it down. No, I don't think there is a box topper for this. Um, I think this one's just gonna go to $20. Um, I, I think it's a good card, especially uh, in decks that have a sacrifice synergy. But in order to really take advantage of this, you have to you know, you have to be able to untap and retap this multiple times, get enough, you know, have a creature generator to get creatures out there. Can be done. I just see a lot of working parts with that. I see a lot of desire for this card, but 20 bucks is just where I think it's going to be at. Um, out of these two, similar, similarly priced right now, Urborg is definitely the one to get, in my opinion. Okay, that brings us to Life from the Loam. Uh, this card has a really, really low inventory online. There is a box topper of it. Uh, this one is $14 for the regular version and $87 for the box topper. I think the regular version of this goes to about $25. Um, the ability to get three target lands from your graveyard is pretty good, in my opinion. Um, the fact that it has the dredge uh, ability on it as well, um, I think that makes this one uh, really good in a lot of different formats. Uh, as far as the box topper, um, I think 120 bucks. That's that's my prediction for this one. Um, I think there's a lot of room to grow from where it's at, and there's a tremendously low inventory of those box toppers as well, compared with other ones. Uh, 14 bucks for the regular, 25 is where I think it's going, and a lot of room to grow in the box topper. All right, that's gonna bring us to through the breach. We got several foils. We got a box topper as well. Um, we got a lot of through the breach. In fact, it's one of the one of the rares that I got the most of in my opening. Um, so let's see, Through the Breach is sitting at $14 right now, $70 for the box topper. The box topper has come down in price, started off at about 90, and that's where I think it's going back to. Um, the regular version of this, I think is gonna be 25 bucks. So that's that's what I think with that. This is another Kamigawa card that, um, not a lot of inventory, but all of a sudden, you know, we've got a whole bunch, the price came way down, but this one seems to have a lot of demand for it, um, I think, or much more so than Gorio's Vengeance. So I think that this is gonna go back up pretty soon. All right, now we're getting to the bigger cards. Back to basics. Uh, actually, no, this isn't one of the bigger cards. Uh, we're gonna get to those in just a minute. All right, back to basics. Uh, $15 for this card right now. The foil version of it's sitting at about 50, 55. So, um, so definitely, definitely good to get in foil. Uh, first time ever available in foil. Um, I think this one's gonna. I think this one's gonna double in price and be thirty dollars. Frexian Altar. Nineteen dollars right now. This is a card that sees a lot of commander play. Um, there's just a lot of different decks that can run this. Um, I think as people see this card and kind of see it in action, I think more people will want it. Um, it's nineteen dollars now. I wrote down thirty as my price target for this. I could see this going higher. I think this is gonna be a card that just is kind of more awareness comes out with it that more people want. I, I, th I, th I think the fact that more supply hit the market is actually gonna help this card in the long run. And it's actually gonna maybe eclipse where it was at at one point. So I think 30 bucks is a good price target for mid-year. Um, yeah. All right, next up is Celestial Colonnade, the most expensive of the man lands, and in my opinion, the best. Uh, you can get a white or a blue with this one, the classic control colors, and it can turn into a 4-4 white and blue elemental with flying and vigilance, but it's still a land. Um, this one's sitting at 19 bucks. Uh, this was actually a card that I mentioned in my openings that I thought would maintain its price and go up. I'm sorta kinda right. 
it has not fallen tremendously in price from where it has been. Um, the demand for it is not as strong as I think it would be, or I think it should be, but that's just my opinion. Uh, $19 is where it sits. I think this one's going to settle in nicely at $30 in a few months. $75 for the box topper. I'm actually going to say that I think the box topper is going to come down in price. I think $60 is where this box topper eventually will settle. Um, that's a that's a two times multiple of the regular card price. I just don't think that these man lands are going to man lands are going to have demand in the box toppers. Um, it's just how I feel. I could be totally wrong about that, but you know, I, it, it, the box toppers are not something I'm going to be running out and investing in. Um, but if I were going to, this would be one of the ones right here. In fact, I don't. I actually don't think I'm planning on getting rid of the ancient tomb um, any anytime soon. Ancient tomba. Um, all right. So now we are into the into the, the higher dollar ones, into the twenty dollar plus cards. So twenty two dollars a piece for ancient tomb regular version. Uh, the box topper version is one hundred and thirty. There's very low inventory of both of these online. Um, at the time of this video, I think the regular version is going to go to $35. Um, this one just didn't come down a lot in price. So I think uh, 35 is where it's going to, going to settle in at. That's a, that's a decent climb from where it's at, but it is not a double. The box topper is, I don't think in a double, but at the same time, I think it has a lot of room to grow. I think $200. I think $200 is a real price for this. I think it's just one of those premier cards that is in a lot of commander decks. Um, and I think people over time are going to want to bling their stuff out. So I think $200 is a price. We've seen it with the Zendikar Expeditions and the Kaladesh Inventions. There is price support for these lottery cards at the $200 plus mark. Demonic Tutor, $25 for the regular version, about $60 for the foil, and $150 for the box topper. Um, again, another card that has a tremendously low supply, comparatively speaking, just because I think as people are cracking these open, they're just going into decks. They are not running down to the local store to trade away their demonic tutors. Um, there are plenty out there for sale. It's just, you know, the stores are going to run out and then they're going to have to find more. And these are going to be hot buy list cards. So I think this is going to go to 35 bucks. Um, Demonic Tutor was about $50 before it got released in Ultimate Masters. There's just a tremendous amount of supply of the card out there for if you just want to search your library. Um, you can pick up a revised copy with the old classic artwork. I actually like this artwork a lot better. Um, I love the foil version and I really love the box topper version. I think the box topper of this also gets to $200. Um, that's $50 more than where it's sitting at today. I just think that box toppers, you know, people are not getting rid of right now. My throat is growing dry. Sorry, my voice is changing here as we speak. Okay, that brings us to the second most expensive rare of the set, Engineered Explosives, sitting at $24. Um, that's lower than I thought it would ever get to. Uh, I thought this was gonna hold steady at around 30. It's dropped into the 20s. Um, the box topper version is about 80 bucks. This is a card that sees play in multiple formats. It goes in and out of favor. So, of course, the price is going to fluctuate because of that. I think this will be $40 before you know it. I think probably give us till March. Could be 40 bucks by then, uh, by the end of March. But I'm definitely thinking by June, unless something crazy happens and for some reason it just falls way out of favor. Um, but no matter what, I think these will always be great trade bait. This is the only one of the top four cards, which are the more expensive rares in the, in the set, that this, there actually is a decent amount of inventory online for these right now, because this one is a little bit out of favor right now. So $24 right now, $40 later, $80 for the box topper, $120 later is my guess. Last but not least, the big, big green mama in the deck is Noble Hierarch. So this is a $46 rare. It was sitting at $50 for the longest time, hovered, was it 50? Went up to 52, 53. We all thought, okay, here it goes, climbing back up. And then it dropped into the 40s this week. It was kind of weird, um, actually very weird. I think what it is, I think a lot of people decided, hey, you know what? These boxes are really expensive. I would like to buy more boxes or I'd like to open up more packs or whatever. This card is, you know, 50 bucks. Let me trade it. Let me get some more stuff. Let me sell it. Let me get some more packs to open up. Um, you know, this just kind of became a, a, an, an easy way to, to kind of get something else, uh, just because of the price, but there's a tremendous amount of demand for this card as well. There's low inventory right now. Um, all the, all the, the, the mid $40 cards have been bought up. There's a couple sitting around 46 and then they jumped to 50 again. 
as far as inventory goes. And once that, that lower price inventory is gone, this just has a climb to make. Um, I think this is gonna go to $70. This is a card that people run multiple of in a lot of different decks. Um, like I said, it sees play in a lot of different formats. The box topper version is 120. This is a weird one. I have noticed that cards that are more popular in like modern, they don't seem, the box toppers, I just don't think are gonna be that good. Um, but this one is this one is is the is where I think it could be different because this sees play in vintage and legacy. I feel like people there have a little bit more disposable income, like to bling out their decks a little bit more. So I'm going to guess again, 200 bucks on the box topper if you were lucky enough to get one. Um, would not blame you if you decided to trade it away now, uh, but I think $200 is a real price for Noble High Arts box topper, and I think $70 is an easy price for the regular version of it. Obviously, if you get the foil version, probably about a $20 premium on that, regardless of what you're talking about. So about $70 now, about $90 later. So there you have it. There are the rares from the Ultimate Master Set, as well as the two uncommons, which make a feature in the box topper. I didn't pull out a Kitchen Finks for you to look at and see. Um, I probably should have, but anyway. So once again, what do you guys think? Uh, do you think I'm wrong about any of these things? Do you think that I'm right on the money about any of them? How is this going to affect your collecting? Leave those comments down below, let me know. Uh, leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'm all of a sudden launching into the end of a PS Toy Reviews video. That's what I always do. So anyway, uh, that's not what we do here. Um, I am looking forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me. Hope you enjoyed it. We will be opening more soon, so check back soon. See you later. Bye.